Hey everyone, in this video, we will be replacing the prop shaft seal on this STI. So what you want to start by doing is jacking up your vehicle. Jack it up on all fours, this will make life a lot easier when removing the drive shaft. When you jack it up, you've got to remove your gearbox, the cover plate, the, the plastic cover plate that's underneath. You've got to remove your exhaust and then you've got to proceed to removing the drive shaft. Don't forget to disconnect your O2 sensor. Depending on your setup, you should have one just below the gearbox around that vicinity, which you have to unplug from the gearbox harness. You do not need to do this on the front, but I just prefer to do it. I like to mark the drive shaft because this vehicle has never been taken apart before. So I like to mark it to the gearbox and to the front of the prop shaft, just make a line. So when it comes time to reassembly, I can just line it up in exactly the same spot. It's not necessary for the gearbox side. But I'd like to do it just to keep the balance of the whole drivetrain as per what Subaru did. But this is crucial for the rear differential. You want to make sure you mark this. Mark this to the pinion flange and mark this to the drive shaft. Make sure the marks are clear and make sure they will not come out. This is a very important step. Do not miss this point out. So I'll repeat it again. The rear drive shaft that goes on to the differential, to the rear diff, make sure it is splined and marked so that it can be installed in the exact same position as it came out from the vehicle. When it comes time to loosening the four bolts that hold the drive shaft onto the rear diff, I found it a lot easier when the vehicle is jacked up on all fours. You can put a screwdriver in the actual drive shaft in the pinion and just hold it that way and loosen it that way or rotate it so that you have access to two bolts and get someone to put it in gear and hold the brake. And then that way you can just loosen the bolts and then get them to put a neutral, rotate the drive shaft and repeat it for the other two sides, for the other two bolts. Once that's completed, remove your drive shaft carrier the two 14 millimeter bolts. Take that off and then pull out your drive shaft. Be prepared for a bit of oil that will come out from your rear output shaft of the gearbox. Only a little bit will come out there, but just be ready with your container. From here, now you have access to the rear gearbox seal. You can either use a screwdriver very carefully, ensure that you do not damage any part of the housing or scratch any part of it or the output shaft do not damage any of it i personally prefer using a seal puller put up a picture now so you see what that is it's a lot safer to use this and it gives you more leverage to pull the seal out in a safe manner So what you want to do is you want to lubricate this inner seal and you want to lubricate the outer part of the seal as well so it pushes in nice and evenly so i'll show you the type of oil i like to use when lubricating 
these seals. So this is the oil I like to use. It's the Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer. This oil can be used for your engine, your transmission, your differentials. So it's perfectly fine to mix it in any of those scenarios. So how I like to do this. Notice that's the spring here on the inside. This holds tension on the prop shaft when it goes through here. Sometimes while hitting it in, on some seals, um, this seal's fine, but on some other seals, like especially diff pinions, where a lot of force is required, the spring can pop up. So what you can normally do in that scenario to prevent the, the spring from popping out is to pack this with grease, so this won't pop out. But instead of grease, I just use this um, stabilizer. It's quite a thick, heavyweight oil. Just pack it in there. Lube up the inner and outer. And then we'll go ahead underneath the vehicle and start installing it. For installation, you want to make sure that you get a seal installer or a socket or a PVC pipe or something that's only to this outer diameter. So something like this, for example. See how it only hits on the outer part of the seal. You do not want to be hitting any of the inner part. You may want to make sure that you're hitting the outer sleeve of the seal. This socket here is a six point socket. So it's not ideal. I'll grab another one and show you. This is a multi-point socket. Compare this to the six-point. Notice how there's more space through the center of each of these sockets. So this is a preferable type of a socket that you can use to drive in this seal. For anyone who wants this as a reference, this is a 36mm socket. This is an extremely good oil to use for installing any seals. Your cam seal, crank seal. It's a very thick type of oil. It's, it's almost like a grease type consistency, but yet it's a lot easier to deal with than grease. Once it's done, it's all good to go now. Head underneath. It does pay to wear gloves when using this oil. It is very sticky. Make sure you clean that whole area and just check for any dirt or anything similar and give it a good clean. So as you saw there with the proper lubrication, you don't even need to um, smash it in. All you have to do is just push it in with your hand as, with as much force as you can, if you can, otherwise you can tap it in. And then finally use the mallet and tap in the remaining. Just make sure you have an even lip all around. This part here you just want to feel in. Or just do what I did to take a rough measurement. You want this to be even all around. You want this, see this lip here? 
You want that to be even all around, up, down, left, right. Once you're ready and you have installed the new seal, you can go ahead and slot the drive shaft back in, lining up those marks that you made initially before removing them. I personally like to add a bit of Loctite to the bolts. Just any medium strength Loctite will be more than adequate and torque down the bolts to 31 Newton meters or 22.9 foot pounds of torque. So once you do that to all four bolts, you can go ahead and top them down. Oh, of course, okay. Crucial point. Make sure you line up the marks that you made originally. They should all line up again. It's just for phasing and balancing because that's how it was balanced from the factory. Especially if this prop shaft has never been touched before and you've had no issues with vibration. You want to try to install it back in the same manner. So once that's done, lock it all four of your bolts, torque it down, and you're good to go from there. And then we can move on to the, putting on the exhaust and putting on the heat shield, plugging the O2 sensor back in and sorting everything else out in there. When tightening your bolts here, and there's two methods in which you can use to lock the drive shaft. You can either get a helper and get them to put the handbrake, then you tighten these two get them to release the handbrake and then you rotate the whole drive shaft but if you don't have someone to help you and you're just a single person just take a long screwdriver or pry bar stick it in the yoke and just lock it that way you go ahead and tighten up all your bolts following the same procedure rotate round and torque them down Hope this video was of some help to you. If it was, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone. See ya.